All right. I want to thank you guys all for attending this uh, webinar. One thing I say at the beginning of all of these, I am recording this. And the reason, why, one of the reasons why we're recording this is for you guys that are actually participating in this webinar. If you're watching this webinar, watch it again relatively soon after. It's going to take me a little while to compress it and send it out and all that stuff. But, you know, within a couple of days, watch it again, because when you watch it again, some of these nuances that I'm going to be talking about are going to stick longer. If you wait a month down the road, it's going to be like learning it all over again. And yes, this strategy that we're going to be talking about is a beginner to intermediate strategy. It's not one of my favorite, you know, these easier strategies to understand you guys are sometimes a little bit, uh, they're easier to understand and have a lower risk profile in a sense, but that will generally come with a lower probability of strategy. The long straddle is a good one if you hit it right. It is not one that I would suggest doing, you know, putting on every single month and say like the IWM or the SPY or SPX or something like that, that, you know, as a trade, because that if you do it every month, you're going to end up losing money over the long term. It's going to be a rare occasion that this thing really pays out. So it's something that comes in line when you have uh, you found a stock that you believe is really ready to kind of bust out of this little sideways trend that we've got going or just make an outpaced move. <laughs> hey, Trevor. Uh, all right. So that's the beauty in the, the long strata. We know what we're risking. We have a, a potential for a absolute home run because it can go in either direction and we still make money. Uh, that being said, the chances of that really coming to fruition are going to be relatively low to other compared to other strategies all right let me get a couple of things out of the way real quick my name is eric wilkinson some of you guys may recognize me from cnbc fox business wall street journal uh, etc for commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis i've actually traded my own money since college with money i had earned i actually started working on a farm when i was like 13 years old it was a family farm but when i went to college i had a bit of money I stuck in a bank account and this guy walked up to me and said, would you like to start investing some of that? And I was like, ah, no, I'm good right now. And I was trying to get a psychology degree. Well, kind of thought stuck in my mind and I started reading the Wall Street Journal, looking at it, started trading or investing in stocks. And then I started trading options against it, doing covered calls, things of that nature. Uh, and then after graduating from college, long story longer, <laughs> uh, I moved up to Chicago uh, sold all my stocks, basically bought this little badge right here, backed myself and started trading in the pits of the Chicago Board of Trade. So in that entire time, I've traded everything from stocks, financial futures, commodities, currencies and options on all these products, basically in all market conditions. Uh, it sounds like the nickname of a close college girlfriend, Wolfman. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All right. Anyway, a uh, little bit of humor in here, keeping it keeping it real. Uh, anyway, disclaimer is any opinions, news, research or analysis or other information contained here or material provided by ProTrader Strategies is to be considered or uh, construed as general market commentary and does not constitute investment advice or solicitation to buy or sell any of the security strategy. What this is basically getting down to you guys is, you know, for one, I may have straddles in my position. I'm not trying to pump this particular strategy. I'm not even going to be trying to pump any particular stock. I'm going to talk about things that I see in the market and correlate it to my own portfolio. I don't know what's in your portfolio. I don't know what uh, type of risk parameters you have. I don't know how long you've been trading. So you got to take what I... I'm saying here and implement it in your portfolios in your own way when it is appropriate for you. All right. Bottom line is do your own homework. Please remember past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. That being said, I do talk about my trades a lot. I'll tell you when I'm getting into them. I'll tell you when I'm getting out of them, but I am not uh, advising necessarily that that should be done for you because again, I don't know what's in your portfolio. I may be saying get short Tesla and your long Tesla. So all of those things take into consideration. 
All right. Oh, I got you. <laughs> um, anyway, you guys can follow me on Twitter at Wolfman's blog or follow our parent company, Twitter at ProTraderStrat. All right. Um, might get some of the snark like Rick loves the dole out. Rick probably should tell us all what his Twitter account is. All right. Anyway, uh, how to trade the long straddle. This seems very easy, right? I mean, I'm not going to lie. Anybody can go online and do a long straddle. That's pretty simple, right? At the money put, same strike at the money call. That's a straddle. You're using the same strikes. If the stock is trading 100, we're using the 100 put, the 100 call. Pretty easy. Webinar is over, right? No. No, you guys. Uh, that's being said, this is the stuff you can find online. The stuff I'm going to talk about isn't going to be easily found online because when do we put this on? When is it going to increase our probabilities of success? Well, hopefully we can answer some of those questions here pretty soon. And this is a basic setup. I actually did this on Apple earlier today. Apple is trading very close to uh, 180. You can see it was 179.68, 50 cents away, right? So very close to the 180 straddle or 180 strike. That was as close as you're going to get anyway. And we're buying a put and a call at that strike that is closest to out the money. Now, this is our risk parameter. I want you guys to keep an eye on this because my analysis or analyze tab has one standard deviation. OK, so that one standard deviation move is about a, you know, a 16 percent probability of happening. OK, we are inside of that, which is what you want. The further inside this break even kind of happens, the better the uh, environment anyway for that particular underlying. And I'll show you how that's all going to change around with different underlines. When we pull up the platform, just let me get through these slides real quick. All right, so the essentials to success, these are every single strategy I do. I basically punch in these next uh, five line items and then go through my checklist every time when I'm going and looking at a possible strategy for an underlying. So if I find an underlying and I'm like, you know, this is this underlying is perfect for the long straddle and it's Aon. All right. You think you're just looking at the charts. All right. And you, you find a stock. OK, this start it looks like it's ready to break out. Let's see if it's good for the long straddle, because um, I think it's, you know, a good opportunity. Well, the long the right underlying, something like Aon may not necessarily fit the books. Because if we look at Aon, you know, let's just say Aon's ready to break out. And, and it obviously just did. But picking the right underlying for me is that you look at the option montage. All right. Somewhere 30 inside of 35 days is what I usually say. You can look at the uh, 10 days or inside of 10 days. But I usually go a little bit further out just to kind of figure that out. The bid offer should be about 10 cents wide, and that's on a stock that is under $100. Any stock over $100, we're just going to take the decimal point and move it three ticks to the left and say, you know, round it up, 15 cents. So Aon should have bid to offer 15 cents wide. You can see that Aon usually will have really wide markets. Now, I don't like to do that in this situation because if we get a move that is correct, you know, the further one of these goes into the money, the wider and wider those spreads are going to get. And that is imperative. It, on a stock like Aon, where there's not a lot of volume and open interest in there, you can see not a lot of participation anywhere in here. There's when it gets deeper in the money, you're going to have to give up so much edge to get out because there's only one or two people trading it or keeping an eye on it. And this is trading around 150. If we look at something like Apple, like the previous example I just showed on the uh, Analyze tab, which I did pull off today, so it should be relatively close. It's probably even it's even closer now. But you know, we kind of look at Apple. Let's just look at the further out duration. Same rule of thumb: three ticks to the left, 18 cents wide is what this option montage should show. And look, Apple's about five cents wide, seven cents wide, really tight markets. So we know that once it goes into the money. Look at all this. There's still a lot of participation on these in the money. So somebody is willing to give up edge to trade. This is the idea. All right. So you will see these get a far apart way out here, but still not quite as wide as we were even seeing in Aon in a very close 
proximity and price. So you that kind of as close as we can get to comparing apples to apples on a good example versus a bad example, right? All right. And then um, uh, David, let me, or, or sorry, John, give me a second and I'll, uh, I'm gonna have to pull up something and uh, I'm gonna have to try and hopefully do this uh, on here. Let me find it. I'll find it for you. Um, so uh, give me a second. So that's what we're looking for. Type bid ask on picking the right underline. All right, the next one is, uh, next step we do is picking the right strike. Well, this one, because it's always in my list of going down, picking the right strike, we just have to know we're picking the out the money. And if you're slightly directional, for instance, let's say in that example on Apple, I picked that 180 strike. You can be directionally biased by picking, say, the 185 strike and make that the straddle. Now, if you do that, keep in mind, the market needs to go up uh, or, you know, you're going to be directionally biased to uh, actually the downside. It's going to be more by Well, I'll show you. So if we pick. Um, okay, so what we're talking about with the Delta and things of that nature, picking the strike. So this 180 strike is the at the money. Now, if we pick the 185 strike, that's going to actually make us bias to the downside. So if we look at this on the analyze tab, this is the one that I uh, pulled up for the example, the 180 strike. So we'll do that on the analyze tab and check it out. Just to give you apples to apples on this one and um, analyze the trade here. So it's the same idea, right? So what we can do is go over here and look at our deltas and we're slightly positive by one delta that's pretty neutral and we kind of want to have our deltas relatively neutral because we're expecting an, a move in either direction if we only expected a move to the upside we wouldn't be doing the straddle right if we only expected a move to the upside why would we play that downside then this is one of those where it's like i i have it i like to use this analysis of and and i might be dating myself if you guys remember those old um balsa wood airplanes where you take the rubber band and you attach it to the propeller and you wind up that propeller right the more you wind up that propeller the faster that propeller is going to spin when it unlock un gets like let go or uh, unlocked in a sense and that's the same way the markets work believe it or not the longer it stays in that tight little pattern it's like that rubber band getting wound up and there's a lot of tension getting built up and the longer it stays in that pattern generally speaking the sharper the move is out and away from there uh and that is the uh the idea we're looking for in this particular scenario for me i like to see it when a underlying kind of starts flatlining because sooner or later it's going to jump and i this is one of those ones where i just don't know it's going to go one way or the other i'm just looking at the technicals it, to me when i see that pattern I just know it's going to pop and it could go in either direction. Um, to select Apple for this strata, I, I'm kind of, yes. Uh, how did, Trevor's asking, can you explain how I picked Apple for this strategy? Because it fit all of these rules I'm going to go through. So, you know, it, it's the right underlying. It's got tight. We got the strikes. Uh, the next one is picking the right duration. We need to make sure that we have outside of you know 45 50 days is what i like to look for get outside of here because we are buying options and when we buy options we do not want this theta to happen and this is a representation representation of at the money calls and at the money puts this is theta decaying at that option premium at this rate and when we get inside of 35 days you can see it picks up quite a bit and then the last seven days, it is a massive sell-off. So people a lot of times will say, do you do weeklies? Well, I wouldn't do short-term weeklies with this for sure. Because look at that. You you need to have that move happen like that right away. Another thing with getting out here, low probability strategy, we get low theta, but we also have a lot more time to be right. Okay, so try and get out there. Anytime I'm buying options, I want time to be right. 
and I want this slow theta decay, All right? The next thing I would look at is picking the right environment. We need to have high implied volat or sorry, <laughs> I didn't mean to say that. Scratch that, you didn't hear that. We need to have low implied volatility, all right? And it's going to be very difficult right now because we know what we've seen in January. Are we gonna see that the rest of the year? Is this that volatility we saw back in January and February, is that volatility just, you know, one of those uh, black swan events in a sense, it wasn't necessarily a black swan event, don't get me wrong, but you know, you get the idea. It's one of those things that happens very rarely. The last time we had one of these volatility spikes was several years ago to the 50s. So is that going to happen again? So one thing we need is low implied volatility. So for a stock under 50, for an ETF or an index, we want that volatility to be below 30. The idea is when it's really low, probabilities are volatility will expand. It's not you know, a for sure thing, but when volatility is exceptionally low, that's when we want to buy options or in a sense, you're buying volatility because you're expecting it to go up. Vice versa, when it's really high, you want to be selling options because you expect it to go down. So for this one, when we're buying options, 90% of the time, there's one strategy I can think of, and we just went over those, remember, with the, uh, the butterflies. We want volatility when we're buying to increase. And I'll show you why here in a minute uh, on that. Uh, chart while you show and discuss the apple straddle. I will. I'm going to go back to the apple straddle here in a second. All right. Um, so... Picking the right environment, we need high implied volatility. Knowing our exit strategy before entering the trade. All of these things should be written down on a piece of paper. I'm working on getting you guys something where you can do it on like an Excel spreadsheet. But picking the right, when you go through these and you decide on it, write all of these things down. Why you did it, what the environment was, what the duration was when you entered the trade. You know, even how long you were in that trade is another good one to put in there. Uh, because I write the date I get in, the date I write out uh, to get out. But knowing our exit strategy is very important. Write this down also. When you do this strategy, write it down because you're more likely to stick to your game plan if you write it down. If you have it in your head, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people say they are going to get out at a certain level and don't get out at that level uh, because they think, Oh, well, I was right. It's going to continue on. And then they've lost money on it. It'll come back and they should have gotten out. You are more likely to stick to your, uh, your strategy if you write it down. Um, sorry, I have a dog sleeping in the background. And uh, another rule of thumb with this, because it is a low probability strategy. One thing I talk about with, sorry, the knowing your exit strategy. Here's what we do. 30% increase in profit on our straddle. That's when we're going to get out or a 50% reduction from the premium we paid. So, for instance, we paid two dollars for this straddle. When it goes down to a dollar, I'm out. If it goes up to two dollars and 60 cents, I'm looking to get out. All right. I have a very short leash on this strategy, you guys, because it can go sideways quickly and uh, and not work out. So take your profits and run with it. This is another way to kind of look at it. Days in the trade. If you're in the day, if you're in this trade for less than 10 days, it should have less than on here, but less than 10 days and you're already at a 10% profit, highly consider getting out of that. Same with less than 15 days, 15% profit. Less than 20 days, 20% profit. Less than 25 days and you're at a 30% profit, get out. That's where I'm going. You know, you can kind of figure it out from here. You know, if you're in there less than 30 days, you're at like probably a, uh, you know, a 35, 40% profit. One thing with this straddle is it will take a long time to, uh, to get, you know, to your levels usually. I like to try and pick my levels. It goes there. I'm going to get out, All right? <laughs> your dog agrees. Uh, the spreadsheet is a good idea and my dog agrees. I appreciate that. All right, so 
let's go through these steps with Apple uh, because it is one that I was, where is my thing? Um, Apple. All right, so let's look at a chart on Apple. I'm looking at Apple kind of trading sideways. This is what I was talking about. You know, it's kind of bop, made a big move. It's settled down. Now, boom, boom, boom. It's kind of popping around here, it's staying within this area right here. All right, that's the kind of situation like this where I like to get it because it'll have a tendency to make a move. And we want this to move to happen relatively quickly. Something like this, where that's that rubber band getting wound real tight. We don't know which way it's going to go necessarily, but boom. Some people would have thought that this Fibonacci level held it. Well, guess what? Boom. That would have probably made that straddle a home run right there. But, you know, uh, you're not getting the max profit out of it because uh, the max profit is unlimited, you know, so you need to pick your levels on this and know what your exit strategy is. So max profit is unlimited on this. Our max loss, anytime we're paying a premium, that is our max loss. Because it's a straddle and it could go in either direction, we have two break evens, but they both break evens can't get hit at the same time. So it's an or, okay? Underlying price, and this is at, all of these things are at expiration, especially the break even, because you don't necessarily have to have this straddle move like in that Facebook one, $8 before I'm profitable. If the market starts moving right away, we're gonna be profitable relatively quickly. And I'll show you that again also when we pull up this uh, platform. All right, so the underlying equals the call strike plus the premium paid. So you add that premium into the call strike to get to your break even because you're buying the straddle and the long put minus the premium. So the long put minus the premium. So we have to go past our long put strike uh, by the amount of premium before we reach our break even at expiration. You will be able to treat profit before then. All right. Uh, uh, can we gamma scalp once a big move happens? Yes, CJ, you can do the gamma scalp on that. Absolutely. And that's, you know, when you're doing that gamma scalp, that's closer to expiration, which I don't like to play around with. But I do know, I do have a lot of friends that that's basically all they do is gamma scalp. And yes, that is definitely uh, doable here. <clears throat> all right. So let's get back to the platform real quick. Um you know, and, and CJ, I don't really teach the uh, the gamma scalp and stuff like that necessarily right now because, you know, that's that's more of an advanced uh, aspect. All right, so Apple, you know, I'm kind of looking at the charts, right? I don't know if Apple is the right underlying, right? I'm just looking at the stock chart. This this strat, okay, it's got really low implied volatility, right? I can see that it's probably below 50, just eyeballing it. Well, how do we know? The low IV percent, which is all these numbers over here in my watch list in white, is basically telling us where implied volatility is for this particular stock in relation to where it has been for this stock in the past. Every stock has different volatility. You know, a 15 uh, implied volatility right here, this 153, if you make that a percent, it's 15.3 percent, right? So a 15.3% volatility for Apple might be high for like a utility stock, but it might be really low for say Tesla or something else. So that being said, all of these stocks have their own volatility and where they uh, have their ranges in a sense. And you can see that Apple is at a very low implied volatility, uh, but the the we're gonna need to know this fraction in this uh, mathematical problem going forward because we've had such high volatility just recently and it may not uh, stick around. So just so you guys know, in the numerator and the denominator, in the numerator of the division table, we take where the underlying is currently trading, which is 15, and subtract that by the low, which is, let's say, 10. Um, so 15 minus 10 is five. So in the numerator, we have five and we divide that by the sum of the high minus the low, which is the high is, what is that? 37 minus 10, 27. So five divided by 
27, we have uh, two five, right? So that is a ballpark. We can we can look at Apple on the on the, at least this trade page to see if it uh, coincides somewhere around that implied volatility percent. I don't want that one. Which one do I want? I don't want that either. Option statistics. That's what I want. Um, and it's saying it's around 18. You know, so I did that in my head. Um, all right. So we have high impl or low implied volatility. Sorry, I keep saying that. Next, one thing we're going to also look at is, is it the right underlying? We know that it has inside of 10 cents wide here. Uh, our rule of thumb, though, is move it three ticks to the left, 18 cents, you know, on this stock. So, yeah, that fits that. Any stock under $100, we want it inside of 10 cents here. All right. The next thing I'm going to look at, I, I checked out the um, implied volatility a little quickly. But the next thing we're going to look at is the duration. Yeah, I'm outside of 50 days. That's kind of going to be my go to, you know, inside of this 42 days. We're going to be inside of that really rapidly decreasing. Um, uh, sorry, theta, if we get inside of this 45 days, right, because by the time it's Monday, we're going to be really close to this where it starts really decaying. We just bought it. We don't want to see that decay when we just bought it. Right. We want to give ourselves a little bit of time to breathe, All right? So going further out in duration now, um, and I picked the environment already. So I'm going to be picking the closest to at the money. It's trading 179.98. So I'm going to buy this one, and then I'm going to buy this 80 put. I look at the deltas just to see if I'm pretty close to being delta neutral. I'm buying this delta, which means I'm long 52 deltas. And I'm buying this, which means I'm getting short 48 deltas. All right. You add those two together, that means I am net long four deltas. All right. That is as close to neutral as you're really going to get. I mean, I'm two pennies off from being <laughs> at the money, right? So that's about as close as you are going to get on. But you want to try to build it that way. Now, if you were slightly, you know, if you were slightly bearish, then you would put it, put the calls a little bit out of the money, the puts in the money, because you're expecting it to go down. And you can see that if I buy 40 deltas, I'm long 40, and I buy negative 60, that means I'm short 60. You add those two together, that's a negative 20 delta, it means I'm bearish. That means I'm down to the downside. Um, <clears throat> OK, does that make sense when I'm talking about that delta? Try and get it close to delta neutral. And that's about it, because when you're going when you start moving away from those at the monies, you actually become more biased uh, directionally. And if I buy these calls that are in the money, I'm buying 62 deltas and I'm buying negative 37 deltas. That means I am bullish. You know, I'm more bullish than I am bearish. Right. I need this to go up in a sense. Does that make sense? Uh, are, are doing the Apple straddle because it broke out, but isn't the straddle best if put on before the breakout? If so, why and why or why not? Well, one of the things that, you know, I was looking at is that the first thing I was looking at for it <clears throat> and the most important thing is this volatility being low. And the reason why we want this volatility being low, more so even than direction. I mean, the idea is we're just expecting it to break out. Maybe um, I, I expected it to break out. Now I'm saying this is basically looking like confirmation or something like that. You could even do it that way. Uh, I'm not necessarily uh, looking for that, but it fit all the other rules. I'm not saying that this is my assumption. I'm trying to give a stock that has all of the other things and not necessarily my, try and preach my viewpoint on Apple. Does that make sense? All right. And then um, what was uh, what was John asking? About? Oh, I got to pull that up yet. Um, so the, why do we want low implied volatility? Okay. 
this is why we when it's this low you can see when it gets this low it's going to have a tendency to turn around and go back up when it's really high it has a tendency to curl back down you know it's going to roll over when it gets up in those upper levels do we know when it's at its lowest level no we don't know what's in its highest level we can only say when it's at the you know extremes it has a higher probability to come back in and that's that's the way the markets move, ebbs and flows, right? Um, and that's what we're expecting there. So, uh, but my assumption in Apple, I'm not really taking into consideration here. Everything else works if that answer your question. Does that make sense? And I wanted to use Apple as an example alongside with uh, another one that was equally priced. So it all worked out good. All right. Um, but having said that, let's move on to this. Let's check out the Analyze tab because I want to show you guys uh, something interesting here. So this is, and you can see I already, uh, which one, let me just get rid of both of these and I'll just do it over again. Uh, this is the one I want to analyze, right? 180, 180.14. Okay. Analyze this trade. All right. So we have our, our V here. So, you know, unlimited to the upside, unlimited if it goes to zero or at least to zero, I should say. But this is volatility right now. And this doesn't really, I'm not going to take into account the date because that takes in, you know, we're taking in a lot of other variables that I kind of want to, I want to separate. I want to isolate those so that you guys can see what happens when and if volatility adjusts, right? So I said you need really low implied volatility. The reason why is if you just haphazardly put this on and you did it in really high implied volatility when, and this is, you know, a representation here, this purple line, if you see it moving back and forth, this is a representation of basically what would happen right now if the underlying were to move in these directions, like right now, split second, you know, take everything else out. All right. Just an idea to separate out theta and, and those coefficients, because some of those things will offset in certain situations, right? I don't want to go into those right now to confuse everybody, but just to give you a simple idea as if implied volatility were to start increasing, what happens? We said we want really low implied volatility because volatility increases, it helps us. Well, you can see this purple line moving immediately, right? That's because when volatility goes up, the premiums get pumped up. And when the premiums get pumped up, we make money. The underlying doesn't have to move. All right. As long as volatility goes up, that's what we want. We're buying volatility when we're buying those options. We are so playing the directional move, but we really want volatility to help us out also by going up and having the market move is, is the bonus. Right. But we want we want volatility to increase as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, we want the directional move. Don't get me wrong. I don't want to, I don't want to play that down at all with this strategy. We really want the move, but we also would like volatility to go up because look at what happens if volatility goes down all of a sudden, you know, we put that strategy on with, you know, a really high implied volatility percent and all of a sudden, boom, we just start seeing our losses happen quickly more quickly than we want to see because when volatility goes down and theta is against us, all of these things will, uh, will accelerate this bend as well. All right. So that's, I try to give a best visual representation as to what volatility can do to options. And I think that this is one of the best ways to kind of throw that out there for you guys. I hope that helps out. Um, and, uh, does that make sense? Does anybody else have any? Uh, uh, it, uh, it is a long Vega trade, like putting on a calendar spread. Uh, well, a calendar spread, a lot of times what you're doing with, with the way I design calendar spreads is you you're you kind of pay for that stuff in a sense. Well, you're you're offsetting the Vega by buying and selling, uh, you know, selling closer to at the uh, uh, expiration and then buying a longer expiry. Uh, but what we try to do is offset a lot of that extrinsic value and um, it's mostly intrinsic value, which then isn't really affected by all those things. All right, um, but we would like low volatility because yes, we are long that long duration and if volatility goes up, then yes, you are long ball way out. So very good, CJ. Um, Anyway, 
Uh, I got a little off on there. Um, that being said, here's what I wanted to look at. So we looked at Apple. Now let's take a look at Facebook because, you know, Facebook it has a very similar chart pattern in a sense where it's kind of winding up. It looks like it's starting to break out. It's been stuck in a pretty decent range right at the where the most time and volume has been spent. But, you know, it's spent its time there. That magnet now people has wound it up. It's ready to snap. Now, here's a couple of other things that I look at when I'm trying to come up with ideas, right, is Facebook's talking about getting into crypto. It's probably the only stock I've ever seen that didn't move on that kind of news, <laughs> like to the upside, like blowing through the roof which I thought would happen with Facebook today, but gives me opportunity to put this on later. Has really low implied volatility, all right? So that fits the bill, it's under a 50 IV percent, okay? Those things are meeting all my parameters. I am actually would lean towards the upside in Facebook, but I'm gonna do it at the money as close as I can anyway, because I, I really don't believe that I necessarily know. Now, that's the, that's the bull case, right? Crypto. Well, why not just buy something that's long if I'm only bullish? It? Well, I'm not because <clears throat> there was a couple articles out today talking about viewership on Facebook and it's down like 25 percent. So people are spending 25 percent less time on Facebook than they have in the past. And some of their they're starting to slow down on their signups and stuff like that. But time spent on Facebook going down. Not good. That's the bearish assumption. They come out with crypto. Maybe they're doing crypto to get that time spent rank back up. You know, all those things. So I don't know which way it's going to go. Let's look at a strap. It's got lower implied volatility or it's got higher implied volatility than Apple. And we saw Apple's analyze tab, right? So the break evens, we were talking about one standard deviation here. And I haven't forgot about you, David, or John, sorry, John, David. Uh, this is basically one standard deviation move to the outside. <clears throat> And then we look at Facebook and we're going to do the same type of straddle, very similarly priced, right? One could say um, we're going to buy this one and then buy the same 185 because that's as close as we can get. We look at the deltas. We're buying 53 deltas. We're buying 47 deltas. We are slightly long, but that's as close as you get basically for, you know, uh, Apple was a little bit closer, but six Delta is long. It's not that big of a deal. All right. So, but slightly higher implied volatility already, right? We can look at Apple. It's at a 17% IV. Uh, Facebook is at a 22 implied volatility percent. But the implied volatility is also a little bit higher just outright where it is currently. <clears throat> so let's look at that trade on the Analyze tab. So we go back to the Analyze the trade. Now look where the break evens are for Facebook, almost close to that one standard deviation move. So if you were going to do one, if you're trying to figure out which one do I want to put the straddle on, which one would you guys put the straddle on? Right. Very good. Mary was the first one on it. Uh, we would want to do Apple because we have a higher probability of Winning on the Apple trade, this is only about a 16% probability that I'm going to make it to this side or a 16% probability I'm going to make it to this side. <coughs> so, uh, um, you know, we got to look at those things as well. Um, let me try and find something for you guys to give you a, a little bit of visual on this real quick. Um, and I want to go with... Uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to dig through my folders here for you uh, guys real quick because I want to try and find a um, a chart of something real quick for you guys or a graph if you will if I can do it real fast and find it and I did I think I hope it's the right one all right let's see so we were asking this is one standard deviation so when we're talking about standard deviations. These are probabilities, right? If you guys are old school or you've ever been graded on a curve, this is what the curve looks like. One standard deviation move to this side is what probability? Well, it's, you know, it's a 34% probability it's going to stay below that. So what's the probability of being above that? 
16% probability. So a 16 delta is the one standard deviation move on a bell curve, okay? And yes, a bell curve can get skewed. Uh, it's a really tiny, get your, but you can see how the curve bends and that has positive and negative skew, which we talked about in those butterflies. Remember when we were talking about skew, how you can tell where skew is to the put side or if it's to the call side, that's what skew looks like on a chart. I like to just look at this really easy. I mean, yes, we, can, we know skew and all that stuff, but that's a different story. But one standard deviation move is a 16% probability, okay, and a 16 delta. So that's what I was talking about with that. John, did, did you catch that? That was for you, my friend, um, and anybody else. And don't feel like you were, I was, you know, pulling you out. I just want to make sure you got the answer to your question. A lot of people will have that same exact question. So uh, Apple, probably the better uh, stock for this. Let's see if my analyze tab still has the other one up. It does. So see, the one standard deviation move is aligned up there. And look how much more room we have. I'd rather have that. I'd rather get to that point than the one that was out here on Apple, right? And that's why you want that low, that low volatility, because the premiums are much lower. We are able to pay less for it. Therefore, if we're able to pay less for it, then we can reach our break evens quicker. Does that all make sense? You guys all follow that? So a 16% probability is a 16 delta. Yes, it is. And like a half standard deviation move is like a 35 delta or, you know, it's a 34 delta, right? We saw it on that. Uh, well, actually, I didn't show you guys that one. I'll show you this one. But this is another really tiny one. Here, I'll zoom in for you. Let's try and zoom in real quick. But um, and it's not very good. But this is a half standard deviation move. Remember, one standard deviation move is a uh, 16 delta, 16 plus 15 is 31. So around, I always say a 35 delta, but it's really 30, closer to 31. Um, so that would be a half standard deviation. All right. So, you know, we have a pretty good probability. I mean, it's not the best, but, you know, we actually have about a 30. 5% probability of um, at least being tested on one of our wings because you remember the probability of it going this way plus probability of it going that way. We have both directional moves that are probable and that's what we want. So it's about a 30% probability that we're going to get tested or that we're going to get to those strikes. Um, a trader hack is inside of these next 70 days. You know, the, the problem Delta is the probability that this strike will finish in the money by one penny at expiration. That's what this Delta tells you to go even more refined, uh, John. So uh, th this is saying Delta tells you that the 210 call strike right now has a 16% probability of being in the money by one penny in the next 70, uh, in on the 70 if day on that expiration day, all right? A floor trader hack is the probability of the market coming up and touching, like kissing it, my strike is two times the delta. So the probability of it coming up and testing that is two times the delta. So we have a 32% probability of it coming up and hitting it. And that's why we get out of these strategies early. My probabilities of just being hit are much greater, two times better than the probability of that strike being in the money by one penny at expiration. What do you want? I'm going to take the higher probability tra trade. I'm not going to roll the dice like that. That becomes a very low probability very quickly. Probability of being hit on one of those is very high, you know, up into the 70s that it's just going to come up there and hit it. But... Uh, in that, we want to go for that 30% increase in the debit we paid, or I'd get out at around $9. What's the 30% increase of uh, 18? Anybody do that right now in their head before I can pull up my calculator? Because while I'm trying to talk and pull up a calculator and figure out the math, I can't do it real quick. So 18 
basically what you do is times, we want an increase of 30%. So you do 1.3, because that's an increase of 30% equals when it's trading $24.40. That's where I'm looking to get out. Oh, CJ probably added in all the pennies and everything else. I don't know. He came out 2023. 20, oh, you beat me. Beat me to it. All right, so John, I see you got a couple of other questions in there. Let me see real quick. Um, John, is it the one of standard deviation the 34 on either side? No, it's a, with that, in a, I correlate, it's percent probability of going outside of that move, right? Now, that 34% in that picture, <clears throat> hopefully I pull up the right one. Um, I like the, yellow, the first one best. All right, so this 34% right here, this is the probability that it will stay within this area, okay? And really, then you'd say the probability that it would stay within this area is, you know, anything below that, you would add all those together. So it's about a 98% chance that it's going to stay within this area because you got all the downside there, all right? So it's the pro this is just selling the probabilities of... It's staying within this area is 68% or 30% higher, 34% lower, right? But correlating standard deviations to delta, that's how they come up with that 16 delta as a one standard deviation move is you add up all the probabilities outside, okay? Because remember, it's not the probability it will stay in, it's the probability it will exceed by one penny at expiration. Does that make sense, John, and everybody else? When we're talking options, because option says the probability that the market will trade up, or actually this is down, down and be just below this put by one penny is this probability. Or you could say all of these probabilities minus, you know, 100 minus all of these probabilities. Okay, so one of the real things I want you guys to make sure you take away from this is we saw even just on a couple percentage points how much more favorable the Apple trade was. You know, you know they're six dollars apart, but the other the uh, the difference was quite a bit on the money we had to pay for it and what our break even where our break evens landed. Don't ever try to, try not to ever really do this strategy, you guys. If you ever see those parameters landing outside of one standard deviation move, that I would say is a red flag. Do not do it on that analyze tab. We go to the analyze tab and we see that these break evens are outside of one standard deviation move. Run away because there's better strategies that you can do that are higher, uh, uh, will have a higher return and probability of success okay so and the closer you get the steeper these v's are that means the less you paid for it because it's pulling all that line in as a matter of fact we can see with apple the less we pay for it watch you see that's getting steeper it's going to be kind of hard whoops i don't want to do that i want to go lower so you can see the break evens are coming in the lines are getting steeper it's kind of hard to say let's just go let's do it dramatic and boom see every we paid less for it break evens way in all of that that makes sense everybody you guys have any questions I know I was I usually throw it out to you guys to go over a couple of uh, things and I saw somebody jumped on that bandwagon and threw one in and I hadn't had a chance to do it um, let's oh one one other thing I do not take this strategy into earnings, okay? I might tr play this strategy going into that earnings cycle because we're so far away, right? What happens when we go into earnings? We see volatility expand. So we're kind of in this area, and we would expect volatility to start expanding heading into that earnings event. But what happens right afterwards? <laughs> volatility crush. All right, that's going to decimate this trade if you go through this type of situation. 
we want this situation because literally the underlying could move completely sideways in this type of movement. Now take it out the chart up here. I'm only looking down here. If the market completely moves sideways and we got this volatility expansion, we would actually probably be very close, if not close to break, even if not profitable going into that earnings event. Okay. Because volatility expanding would offset the theta decay that we would be incurring. All right. Theta is the thief in the night that comes and steals our premium when we're buyers of options. And theta, uh, you know, will decay those premiums and volatility will push it higher and pump up those premiums to offset that in a sense. But when it's offset and all of that volatility comes out, everything goes out. Right. So please don't take this in past that. Anytime you're buying options, that is a loser game. Try and buy options in an earnings event, as far as I'm concerned. Right. Thank you. Good advice. Thank you, Rick. Appreciate that. All right. So low volatility, if nothing else, and you walk away from this webinar and you say, the next time you look at a straddle, the first thing you think of is I need to check volatility percent where the volatility percent is not just ball you guys not just ball you need to figure out the percent where it is now minus the low divide that sum by the high minus the low okay that will give you implied volatility percent one thing another reason why this is really important and i forgot to mention this i wanted to look at this real quick this is what i was talking about with super high implied volatility we didn't see that all of last year basically this spikes really high. Right now, we're looking at IWM. My rule for an ETF or an index has to be below 30. Well, IWM is below 30. That fits that rule. Well, let's do the math on it real quick just to see if it does, because this could be a, a, you know, an anomaly that we, ne we don't see for quite some time. So we could even try and check out the charts and look at like a, just a weekly long one. Um, you know, you can see that it didn't happen really all of last year and the VIX is a little bit better. You know, I guess, uh, you know, in 2016, we did get a couple of spikes. The VIX didn't really spike that much, but it looks like IWM did on these. Um, so maybe it's not such an anomaly, but let's go back to the idea that it is an anomaly. This looks like a pretty big anomaly, right? So we could say, you know, maybe we, it's not going to happen for another couple of years. We've got to take out that massive spike. You'll see this with drug makers when they have a uh, drug trial release, their stock will spike in volatility. Well, that, how many times do they come out with the results of a drug trial? You know, it takes several years. So my, that is another situation where it might not happen for a long time. So you're going to need to know this formula because if we take what this is right now, 15 minus the low, which is, uh, 11 uh let's let's just call it 10 15 minus 10 so we got five uh five divided by the high minus the low which is uh 21 minus 10 is 11 so you take five divided by 11 and what do we get it's 45 percent if we strike that out if we don't believe that this type of volatility is going to happen for another year you see what i'm saying that's why it's really important to know you guys how to come up with that that number that is printed over here because it's not going to take this into a, out of account or out of the uh, equation. It's going to leave it in there. And sometimes like this, uh, Snap uh, hasn't had enough probably. Booking probably hasn't had enough either. But sometimes you'll get breaks in the chart for whatever reason. The algorithm cannot then process any type of break in the chart. And because booking went from price line to or price line to booking that's probably why that's doing that too um so i would need to go in if i wanted to figure out what bookings is and do my own math and it looks like it has pretty low implied volatility okay all right guys so two for one you know two months for the price of one i talk a lot about my daily market commentaries this is your opportunity to get those you guys uh, it doesn't list that in here, but you do get daily market commentaries. 
Uh, I am going to be on vacation Monday and Tuesday. Uh, but I do every other day where or every day other than those uh, daily market commentaries where I go in there. And I talk about the jobs reports, every economic data point, whether it's the PPI, the ISM, the uh, CPI, GDP, all of those. OK, I go in there and tell you what I'm seeing with those numbers, even like with the economic picture across the pond, we're seeing a lot of those uh, numbers really start to come off where uh, we're seeing some slowing going on over in Europe. So I talk about all that stuff and how that should relate to the overall markets by getting into the charts. And I look at all of the daily charts and go over those, what I'm seeing in those, and then uh, roll it into all the trades that I do. And I talk about the day I put them on, or at least I try to, if I put them on in the afternoon, like my earnings trades, then I talk about them the next day. I'll sometimes tweet those out on Twitter as well, or I will tweet those out on Twitter. But the next day, I'll talk about those in the daily market commentary, why I put those on, where I'm expecting to get out. And then going further, uh, when I get out, like taking a loss, why I took a loss, how I'm managing a trade, you know, uh, how I was trying to manage that Intel trade all week. Uh, all of those things I'm talking about on a daily basis. So what I'm trying to do is be the day in life so that you guys can see when I see this kind of stuff, that's when I start getting mechanical. This is when I'm getting out so that you guys can see, you know, I'm practicing what I preach. I do exactly what I talk about in these webinars and, you know, pound that through. So if you guys, uh, for two for one, two months for the price of one, with all of this information, you get the daily market commentaries, like I said, 50 online trading videos, uh, the archives, all of these things. We have webinars, we have shorter ones where you can just go in and review like the shorter 15 minute videos and all of the videos that, uh, market commentaries there's all kinds of stuff in here and it says 50 it's closer to hundreds at this point uh, uh just haven't updated those things but also if you have any questions you can reach out to us at 310-598-6677 or email us at pro trader strategy or trading at pro trader strategies.com you guys should really be uh trading with this knowledge and i forgot to do it the chat window is uh it's in the chat window. Thank you for reminding me. Somebody was like, uh, where do we get this offer? It is in the chat window. I just sent the link. We've been going back and forth in the uh, the questions box. There should be another little tab over there that has that link in it. So uh, at the end of the day, I always teach probabilities and I'm going to be straight up with you guys. You know, when you go online and see how to do a straddle, they're not going to say, you know, this is a low probability strategy. They're just going to say it's defined risk and they're going to give you the nuts and bolts of it. They're not going to give you the 25 years of experience on how to trade these types of things on the floor. And, you know, we didn't have the opportunity to trade in the perfect environment when somebody was asking us for a quote on the floor. We had to take the trade. So believe me, I know when is the wrong time to take on a trade because I'm standing there like, a deer in headlights knowing I don't want this trade and somebody's giving it to me. So learning how to get out of those trades, uh, those crummy trades for a profit is what I do daily now. And I think a lot of you guys will really benefit from that type of knowledge. So uh, check it out right now. When you guys are trading with the right tools in the right situation, you guys will be more productive state of mind and be able to put on more strategies, which is really important because that's going to create more opportunities. The more opportunities you have will create success. And ultimately, it's going to build your confidence to be able to go out there and do it again. If this straddle doesn't work for you the first time, I'm not saying go out there and do it right again, but don't look at a certain strategy. And if it goes against you the first time you do it, never use that strategy again. You need to have a lot of strategies going on that creates diversification uh, not only in stocks, but in what can go right or wrong, right? You know, we're going to have limited risk strategies. You're going to have ones like this in there. You're going to have high risk strategies so that you can hedge yourself. Really, really important. Okay. Um, so it, like I said, if you learn anything at all, you guys uh, should be trading with this and go ahead and click on that link right there. One last thing. I see a couple questions coming up. I'll try and get to you guys here in just a second. This is the link for uh, the subscription two for one deal. You can pause it if you're watching this on replay and type that in there. It's not a hot link. But later, 
webinars, I'm going to be drilling down on uh, options, components, trades, and option strategies that I find appropriate. You can also uh, reach out to us at Pro Trader Strategies uh, through our email trading at Pro Trader Strategies or call us at 310-598-6677. All right. All right. So take advantage of this, guys. Super important. Like you guys go in there and it's like little boxes that you just check off when you've watched them. So you can watch your favorite ones. Uh, and uh, there's some really good ones in there. So I see a couple questions popping up. Let me get to those real quick. Um, if I can get my computer to move. All right. It's not going to let me move it. So I'm going to have to try and stand up maybe to read my thing because it's in my way upside. Uh, how does one do directional strategies in current market conditions? Well, there's a lot of them. I mean, it depends on what you want. Like if it's low implied volatility, you're going to be wanting by uh, directional like call spreads. But if it's high implied volatility and you want to do a directional to the upside, then you would want to probably be selling puts or put spreads to take advantage of that. So there's a lot of different ways and it all depends on the environment, the situation and, you know, your directional assumption to dictate what strategy there is. OK. Um, Ted's asking if I were to get the two for one. Can I email you directly? Oh yeah, well, so as a matter of fact, can I email you directly? Um, I need help on something. Absolutely, Ted. That's one thing I forgot to mention here, you guys. That is one of the big things I always forget to mention, I guess. If you guys have, are a premium member, you have unlimited access to me. Reach out to me on, I know CJ has, I know a couple of other guys, uh, Shady Tree is out there, Mary. I've, I've talked to, I don't even know how many people this week, but. Um, I'm just naming the people that I, I recognize on here from emails, but reach out to me. I have a no inbox policy, Ted. If you reach out to me with a question, I will try and get back to you as soon as possible. Keep in mind, I'm going to be on vacation leaving in about five hours, but, um, so I might be a little delayed on that. Might not work as smoothly as one would hope for the next couple of days. But generally speaking, any other day I am here uh, trading the markets. And if I see an email pop up, I will respond to you as quickly as humanly possible. And if I can't answer you in an email, I won't hesitate to give you a ring. So that is another bonus with the premium membership access is you get unlimited access to me. So Ted, shoot away. Um, much thanks, Wolf, part of the Wolf Club. Rick, I know you are. Thank you. Uh, problem is that direction changes. Well, and yes, it is. But if you have a directional assumption, I mean, you have to go with that, right? We never, I always, I mean, I, a lot of times look at it when I'm doing a strategy, I go in and I look at the charts and I, I been in the markets for 25 years, right? I don't know exactly what directions it's going. I just, you know, get the gut feeling or look at the charts and think, OK, well, this is where it's going to find support or resistance and then come up with my assumption. You know, that's the beauty in what makes the market right. The market can go in either direction at any given time. You know, we have to come up with our own assumption and it's not always right, but it's how you handle that trade that's going against you that makes all the difference in the world. And, you know, I, I try to teach that stuff, especially if you're watching the daily market commentaries. You guys will see me doing that on a daily basis. I, I did that Intel trade where I sold calls expecting it to cover a gap. It actually had two gaps to cover. Just recently, this is in March. I mean, the last nine days. And it covered that gap, those two gaps in one day. Now, I didn't expect that. I was playing it for the downside. It happened too fast um, and wasn't able to get out for my profit. So then when it bounced, snapped back immediately, then... I, I sold some puts against it and I rolled those, you know, I was looking to roll those puts up to make it from a strangle into a straddle, try and collect more premium, increase my break even, stuff like that. So I'm doing all of those stuff on a daily basis and I'm talking with you guys about what I'm thinking. So those things are really important. So you guys really should take advantage of that. All right, Ted, thanks. Appreciate it. You have a tremendous weekend too and a profitable next week. I appreciate it. Thank you for your kind words. I appreciate that. Thank you, CJ. 
Take care, everybody. I'm going to let you guys go. I, oh, I thought I was letting you guys out of here early, you know, not going over. But, of course, I can't do that, right? But, um, yeah. All right, guys. That's about it. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy. Take care, Roger. Thank you. Have a great weekend, everybody.